Hello, everyone. Um, thanks all back here in the room. Um, welcome also uh, people from home who tuned in. Uh, thank you all for uh, joining this uh, talk show. Um, earlier we had a talk show with uh, four um, key persons in the Drupal community and um, key persons and key companies in the Drupal community. Um, this uh, slot we have uh, one guest and that is uh, Len Swaneveld. He is a senior um, uh, Drupal developer at uh, I.O. And um, we're going to talk about core Drupal because that's really what you like, isn't it, Len? Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, I, I do quite a lot of contributing to Drupal Core. I'm uh, one of the maintainers of the Views module in Drupal Core, so uh, that's where I spend a lot of time, a lot of my free time and some of my company time as well, trying to con contribute to uh, the Drupal project. Wow. Okay. Well, uh, thank you very much for uh, being on stage uh, with us here. I understood that it's uh, quite a challenge for you because this is not a structured format as doing a presentation. So uh, kudos for uh, for, for t uh, taking that leap for stepping into it. Um, uh, first question I have uh, for you is, is regarding the, the core of Drupal. Um, do you think that uh, the core, Drupal core, is something which should have more attention and more, um, uh, how do you say that, more um, visibility within the total Drupal community? I'm not sure if it needs more. I think mm -hmm. it, it's, it, it's getting attention, and uh, especially during stuff like the Dries node, it's all focused yeah. on, on core and not so much in, on contrib. Yeah. I think we could actually spend some more time talking about contrib, how important it is to the entire ecosystem of Drupal. It's not just core that makes Drupal great. It's, it's the entirety of the, of the ecosystem. Um, so no, I, th I think core gets the credit that it's due. Um, uh, of course, you know we could spend more time working on it. You know, we, we need we need to address a lot of issues, and there's a lot of work to, that can be done. Uh, but mm, I'm not necessarily sure if we should take focus away from the rest of the ecosystem and fo refocus that on core, because I think the rest of the ecosystem is important as well. All right, thank you. Let me also introduce my uh, co-host, that's uh, Bert Boerland. Um, Bert, you're here because you actually know more about the topic, which is not very difficult. <laughs> not as much as he does. <laughs> <laughs> not so much of it, no, okay. But um, uh, do you have a question sure, uh, sure. for Len here? Um, nobody starts at Drupal Core because it's the most complex stuff in Drupal itself, right? So could you say something how you, uh, or, or don't you agree, but that's for later. <laughs> could you start, uh, uh, tell a little bit about how you Entered the Drupal Drupal sphere and 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 how you how you became a core maintainer? Yeah, well, I, I entered Drupal because we had a client that was looking for a CMS, mm -hmm. and we just came on to Drupal because it looked good and the code looked good, so we, we we felt like okay, this is something we like to work with, and that's how you start. You start working with Drupal, and then you see all these people that are working really hard to make Drupal better, mm -hmm. and at some point. You know, we were working with Drupal for five or six years before we really started contributing. And what version was that? It was six. We started out in six. But really, until seven came out, I wasn't really contributing. Uh, maybe write an occasional patch for contrib, mm -hmm. but not core. Um, and then slowly, you start to discover these people putting in a lot of time to make it work. And by that time, we were just earning our money using Drupal. And then you decide, OK, I, I have to give something back. because. You know, if Drupal stops existing, I stop earning my money and have to find something new to do, mm -hmm. which I wasn't looking forward to. Um, and also at that time, I was working in a two-man company, and at some point, it'll get harder to learn new things when you're just a two-man company. Mm. So I want to look outside there for more knowledge. Um, and then first, first you start doing a little bit of contrib, but actually, I pretty much started out working on Drupal core, mm. um, not so much by design, but I was at, at a DrupalCon and we were in the sprint room and we were working on things and you know the issues you work there are, are usually core. Uh, so that's how I started and then I figured, okay, so okay, I like this, I'm, I'm learning a lot of new things because once you're in the, 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 the sprint room, you get to, get to know people that know so much more about Drupal than you do and you can just absorb that knowledge which is awesome and I love that. Um, and I always had a feeling for, for views. I liked views. So I basically decided to myself, I, I, Drupal 8 was being developed. It wasn't out yet. Mm -hmm. And I, I needed something to work on. I tried to find my focus. 
Because you can't just, I work on core. It's too big. Mm. You're going to drown in it. And so to prevent myself from drowning in it, I, I picked, okay, I'll take views. It touches everything. I know it touches everything. So I'll get to l learn all these little bits of core mm -hmm. and still have that connection back to view. So I have a safe base to go out from and then work on views. And I just started picking up issues and started working on them. And, and I, I didn't really know much. And I've never written a test in my life. So I learned how to write tests. And then some, somebody at some point, uh, Daniel Weiner, asked me, OK, so do you want to become a maintainer of views? And I, I was probably working with views for about two years mm. then, so not even that long. And I thought, oh, pff, I don't know. That's a lot of responsibility. So <laughs> a medium responsibility. So, but in the end, I figured, OK, you know, it, it'll be the perfect opportunity to, to learn new things. And, and really get involved and be asked to become involved. And so I say yes and, you know, to go from there. It's cool. I can feel your energy, so that's a good yeah. thing. <laughs> <laughs> and did, did it matter that um, Fuse, which is a way of doing SQL queries via web interface, if I yep. say it correctly, it's a, it's a no-code uh, no code uh, interface for, for, for web, yeah. web developers, like sorry, web masters like I am. Um, did it matter, did you choose Fuse because of that, that it had a high impact on, on, uh, on the end user? Not so much, but it was important to me because I, I'd worked with Fuse in Drupal 7 as a site builder, which is mm -hmm. the role we're talking about, you know, in the site builder role, just, you know, building views. Mm -hmm. I'd done that a lot, and I, I loved how it worked. I was, I was very impressed with what it could do. So that was one of the reasons that I chose it, because I was impressed by what it could do from, from working as a site builder. I thought, oh, this is a very powerful tool. Mm -hmm. So when I heard it was moved into core, because they moved it into core for Drupal 8, yes. yeah. um, I thought, oh, this is fantastic. And I want to help move that along, because I think it's such a powerful tool. And I still believe it is a very powerful tool. That's cool. Fuse is also, um, uh, you say it's very powerful, and powerful comes with bad UI. Or oh, at least oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So how, do you, how do you deal with that? How do you make my life or the mice life better how do you create a better UI or a better UX? Well, I presume that that's not your, your primary cup of tea. It's not. I'm, I'm very much a back-ender. Yeah. And uh, I make your life easier as a, a site builder by not allowing any more features to creep in. I'm, when I'm in my maintainer role, mm -hmm. I reject so many features mm -hmm. where people, we, we can add this and we can add more checkbox. And I'm going, nope. <laughs> we don't want any more checkboxes. We have plenty of checkboxes. We need to lose some checkboxes. That'd be nice. So uh, that, that's what I try to guard because it's so feature rich. Yeah. It's, it's over feature rich. There are so many features in there that probably hardly anybody ever uses, but they're there. So we can't take them out because core development is very restrictive about taking functionality away, yeah. even though it's not used a lot is very restricted about it, because you never know what side you're going to break. They might be used. We can't measure how much a certain feature is used. You can guess, but you're never sure. It used to be true that core development was very slow compared to Contrib, which can have new versions every day. And of course, there's new versions of core every day, or, but not at least stable or, or releasable. Uh, stable releasable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, is that a frustrating thing for you? Because what you program now might be getting live in two years, and it's, and it's changing, of course, but it used to be two in a, in a two year time frame, what you're coding today. Still true. Still true, it can take a very long time. Mm -hmm. uh, contributing to Drupal code, a lot of people are the, under the impression that you need to be very knowledgeable, mm -hmm. and it helps, and for certain issues, yeah, sure, you need to be a very knowledgeable, but perseverance is much more important. Just trying to get it over the line. Keep coming back, keep rerolling, keep addressing the feedback sticking with it is much more important in actually getting something to land. Do you use it? I'm personally, I'm a big fa in favor of atomic habits, which is tiny habits that you do every day. Is that something you do? Do you go to the issue queue every day? If you get up, for it's example? It's weekly for me. I, I do check uh, Slack every day and the Drupal Slack, mm -hmm. where I'm fairly active at certain channels, mm -hmm. especially the Bug Smash channel, where we have an initiative. Uh, I check that every morning before I actually get out of bed. I check and, and see so who posted. And mm -hmm. we have this lovely thing in the, uh, the Bug Smash issue queue where we post one issue every day that we want to triage. 
and the issue is run mostly by Australians, so yeah. the issue gets posted in, uh, yeah, in the middle yeah. of the night. <laughs> so every morning when you wake up, there's a, there's a new issue there, and we try to have some discussion on that issue. So that that's, that's to me so that's cool. waking up and just looking at that. So oh, what what which random issue came up today? And that's so and cool. That's what I meant with atomic habits. Small things you do every day to yeah. get your industry. And and but the, the real. Um, the real habits, the, the more impactful ones, mm. I do probably weekly, where I check the views issue queue and go through that, see which new issues have been posted, see if you know, it requires some sort of work or maybe. That's very reactive, right? You go to the queue if there's an issue. Don't you ever feel like, hey, but I want to work on this despite what people want, despite what people... Oh, I do that as well. Yeah. But it's very hard to pick on what's more worthy to work on. And, and then you also have to uh, be sure about where can I make the most impact. So we have a lot of people that can fix bugs. Mm -hmm. That's usually not, pe people fixing bugs is not the bottleneck in, in getting things into core. Mm -hmm. It's people reviewing, mm -hmm. which is a, a major bottleneck, mm -hmm. and, and people writing tests, mm -hmm. which is for some reason still, you know, something not a lot of people. In your work, I presume you have a product owner who is, um, 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 who is who's, who's guiding you through the, through the issue queue or, or the backlog maybe. Yeah. That's not, the same in open source development. Are you your own product owner? In a sense, because there there, there are no guidelines, mm -hmm. uh, and that's also one of the things we try to do with the bug smashing is to is sort of find those guidelines because uh, you know what is more important than than what because you know it, it's one gigantic backlog and nobody prioritizes, which is usually what you do or what the product owner do, does is EPR they they prioritize the backlog, and this has n no prioritizing. Yeah. You mentioned um, um, uh, the Bug Squad uh, initiative twice now. Yeah. Could you tell something about it? What, it, what is it? It's, it's a community initiative. So if, if you watch the Dries notes, uh, they're always about um, like strategic initiatives. It's, it's, those are the things that uh, long term we're, we're, we're trying to do to make Drupal uh, better or stay significant. Um, and that's what business usually cares about, so, so something that, that helps you sell Drupal. Mm -hmm. And the community initiatives are the things that the community cares about, where they think, okay, yeah, well, we, we, we need to do all that stuff, as well, but to make all that stuff possible, we need to do this and this and this as well. Mm -hmm. So the Bug Smash initiative uh, is about getting some sort of grip on the issue queue. So if, if you look at Drupal core for, for, for Drupal 8 or 9 or 10, we now have about a little over 6,500 open bugs, where two years ago we had 7,500 7, 7, open, 7, open bugs. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to get to grips with that, because a lot of those are actual bugs, but a lot of those aren't. Mm -hmm. And getting started in core, where do you start? Yeah. If you have 7,000 things to choose from, where do you start? So it's basically problem. setting up a triage project process to... It, we started out with, okay, we want to fix bugs, but as you pointed out yourself, <laughs> that takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Fixing some, something is hard. Mm -hmm. Where doing triage mm -hmm. is, you know, you can do triage in, in, in five or ten minutes, and that can close a bug as well. Mm -hmm. Or make it actionable, where a lot of bugs don't have steps to reproduce, so they're not actionable until mm -hmm. somebody writes them down. So nobody's going to fix them mm -hmm. until somebody takes... The effort makes the effort to make it in something actionable, cool. and we also try to do that. I'm curious for the person Len, because you're sitting here now as a senior open source developer, specifically for Drupal. Uh, but um, when you were 12, 15 years old, did you already think like, okay, I want to go into IT and I want to become a, a developer? Or can you tell us something about <laughs> how? <laughs> when I was out, that old, that wasn't a thing. That didn't. That Sorry? It wasn't a thing that, that didn't exist. No. You know, I, 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 ta I taught myself basic when I was like... Basic, okay. El 11 or something like that. Yeah. How old are you? On my, on my Commodore 64. MS6, Commodore 64. Uh, Commodore 64, okay. us using the Commodore 64 manual to teach myself basic and write text <laughs> adventures. That, that's how I learned myself to program. Yeah. Uh, and I enjoyed that, but it, you know th that was the, the, the middle of the 80s. It, it, eh, I never thought that was something you do. That was fun, but uh, so I, I went on. I, I I I became a microbiologist. Oh, okay. So I have a, I have a bachelor's degree in microbiology. Yeah. Turns out I'm not fit to be a microbiologist. <laughs> uh, Certified. <laughs> yeah. 
So, so that, was, that was not going to work. And then uh, my brother-in-law said to me, so he gave me the big PHP Bible, so 1,500 page of PHP Bible, learn this and we're going <laughs> to do something fun. O'Reilly. The O'Reilly PHP O'Reilly, Bible. yes, yeah, of course. E exactly. Uh, yeah. so, so I worked through that, sitting next to a pool in Cyprus, I think, while my girlfriend was on, on, a, con on a conference. So I taught myself PHP and, and we took it from there. Wow. That was fun. And uh, you work now for uh, I.O. Yeah. Uh, what do you like most about working for I.O.? Well, I worked for myself for, for, for yeah. a while with, with my brother-in-law. We had a two-man company. Um, so what at first I was looking for was some bigger projects to work on. So one of my passions or one of the things that I like to work on is automated testing. And that only becomes relevant if you have big projects that you know have to maintain for a long time. And uh, we never got around to that. So so. I was just looking for something a little bigger than, than you can do with the two of you. And so, yeah, that's one of the, the, the things I like about yeah, being in a bigger company is that you get bigger projects as well. Yeah. But what I also loved is that they clearly had a heart for open, open source. Oh, yeah. So they, they loved the fact that I was really active in the open source community. So, okay, you know, we, they, they, they never asked me anything about you. Write a piece of code for, for, for us so we can see what you can do. So your best resume is Drupal.org, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I just looked at and go, okay, so, so we want this guy because he has yeah. a hard heart for, for, for open source. Cool. And they, they felt that as well. And so they also give me room to, you know, do my maintainership on, on company time. Partially, you know, of course, I still do weekends and, and nights. <laughs> you know, it's a hobby. So like yeah. anything else, you, you also do, do that in your off time. But they yeah. also give me room to do it during... All right, so journey from uh, BASIC on the Commodore 64, and then you learned O'Reilly uh, Bible on PHP, and now you are a uh, core developer. You can Im imagine what my next question is. Where do you want to be yourself in 10 years' time? I have no idea. No? No, I've never had a goal like that. I'm not ambitious that way. I'll just see where it goes. Okay. And, that's and, and, and all of this has also been like, like, you know, we'll see where it goes. And for, and for Fuse, is there a vision for there that you want to be in? Maybe right not 10, but... Two. Right now, it's the biggest bag of bugs in Drupal core. Mm. So f to me, it's stabilizing it. Keeping what we have and making it manageable, if anything, especially with what we saw on the trees node, where we're sort of refocusing uh, on the site builder thing. Mm. Is m maybe it's m more about Fuse UI than Fuse itself. Yeah making that better. And, th and th there have been propositions about making that better because everybody can look at it and go, mm. this is an accessibility nightmare. Yeah, but come up with something better. Yeah. So show me something that, that, that's better and still covers all that functionality. And that's hard and would take a massive amount of work. And who's going to invest in that? Around, I think, 2006 or something, small core was an issue. Was an issue. Hmm, there you go. But at least uh, making core, Drupal core smaller, more for developers and less for site builders. Recently, we've switched to the same mantra, it seems. Is there a chance that Fuse will ever be out of core? Yeah, we'll never say never, but um, the, the, a lot of effort has gone into integrating it into core quite deeply. And I think it's still a very important part of site building. Um, so if you focus more on the headless thing, there it becomes less important because mm -hmm. you make your list other ways. Mm -hmm. You know, you have other tools for that. But for the classic site builder role, mm -hmm. it's still a very powerful tool that allows you to quickly build stuff that if you're just doing it in a framework, is not, it's not going to be that easy. So just clicking it together is still a powerful tool. Um, so, you know, you never know. But right now, it's... If you, if you weren't doing Fuse or even PHP, what would you be doing apart from microbiology? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not microbiology. That's never happening. But I, I, I honestly, again, I have no idea. I, I don't have ambition that way. I'll just see what comes along. And that's what I usually do. Cool. Uh, is it your responsibility to search for a new maintainer when you leave the project? Because at some day, you know, leaving open source is the hardest thing to do. Well, there are harder things to do than that, but <laughs> <laughs> leaving open source is a very hard thing to do. The exit strategy is not that good defined. Do you see it as a responsibility to see, to find a, uh, someone who is going into your steps? I think 
I would find it a responsibility for me, mm -hmm. but I think that'd be very personal. I don't think it needs to be the responsibility of anybody else. Okay. If they want to leave, they should be free to leave. They're doing this usually voluntarily, so mm -hmm. nobody should force you into keeping doing it. Mm -hmm. if, they, if, if you're done with it, get out of it. You know, it, it, like I said, to me, it's a hobby. If the hobby is no longer fun, if you're no longer getting energy from it, then, then, then please stop. Mm -hmm. You're just going to drag people down. So please, just, just, people should always be free to leave. And, but f for me, yeah, that, that's also part of the reason why I thought long and hard about accepting it, because I knew I would feel the responsibility to, you know, when I leave, mm -hmm. I want to, you know, make sure that it, it keeps existing. Maybe if I burn out hard enough, I won't feel the same way and I'll just <laughs> run away. You know, it happens. Uh, but... You know. One of the, you know, the original author of Fuse is uh, Merlin of Chaos, as yeah. his nick is in the, in the community. Are you in contact with him? Do you? I've never actually met him. No? Nope. Good. Never did. <laughs> so I was <laughs> hoping for some, 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 some oh. guidance or none at all. No, I, I, I've, I've never met him. Yeah. I've, uh, no, the, the one that got me into Fuse is, is Daniel, Daniel Weiner, mm -hmm. uh, who was by then... The, the yeah, man? Yeah, yeah. The, yeah the, the man pulling pulling yeah. views along. I'm pulling a lot of core along. Mm -hmm. uh, so and he dragged me in as well mm -hmm. with his mentorship, usually, because I was working on views and he was reviewing and giving me fantastic feedback and, and pointers and, and stuff like that. So he, he's the one that dragged me in. How do you guide your... I, I presume you also guide the younger programmers, the younger developers in I.O., right? Yeah. How do you do that? And 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 and. and how does that relate to open source? Do you learn from open source how you can guide oh, people yeah, or vice versa? Yeah, absolutely. And I also try to instill the open source mentality. So the contrib contributing back uh, is what I always try to tell them. Uh, and just, you know, patience is, is what, what it teaches you. Uh, and, and for one-on-one for -on -one with, 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 with new juniors, you know, in person, that, that's easier to be mm -hmm. patient. Mm -hmm. But on, on the message board and on Drupal.org, Mm -hmm. it's, oh, it's so much harder to, to, to also do that. And you have to be patient because the other people are trying as well. Mm -hmm. And you know so much less, less about them. Mm -hmm. so, so where language can be a massive barrier. So mm -hmm. the, are they, you know, this short with people or are they just not fluent in English? Mm -hmm. And it makes them come over a certain way. So you have to be so patient. Mm -hmm. And I think that carries on everywhere. It's scary to think that patience is the golden key for open source, isn't it? Is it? It's, it's not scary. Well, it's a bit what Driesel once said, uh, and it's a generic uh, saying, but uh, if you want to go fast, uh, go alone. If you want to go far, go in a herd. Uh, so that's basically having patience for having... Having, having patience. Uh, patience and per per perseverance are, are the most important things mm. if, you, if, if you want to work on core. Mm. Cool. I would like to know if you are also interested in a topic that also in Dries note was mentioned, open web. Uh, you're closely obviously uh, to uh, open source and um, do the topic of open web also appeal to you? It does appeal to me. It's not something that I'm actively working on. Mm -hmm. Again, it's, it, it's a bigger picture thing and I'm not a bigger picture guy. I like the, 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 the nitty gritty <laughs> stuff, you know, in, in the trenches. Yeah. That's, that's my thing. Uh, so, but, no, but I love the idea about the open web and I do support that and I think it's okay. awesome when you, when you see these sites that get built with Drupal and you think, you know, in, in my little okay. bit of, you know, yeah. thing, I somehow contributed to yeah. in a little, yeah. tiny little bit. I did contribute to that by making that possible. Yeah. So, sure, I, I, I'm, you know, partial to that, but it, it's not something I would actively get involved in because, again, that's big picture stuff, which not my thing. Hmm. And I'm um, also curious, we're here at a conference, it's been a while, I don't know if you've been to other uh, in-person conferences since the uh, pandemic. I've, I've been to the Drupal Dev Days, which was the first one, it was two, two, okay. two months ago. Yeah. Uh, oh, so it's so great to see everybody again. Yeah. yeah <laughs> incredible. Yeah. So, uh, and, and again, for me, these, these types of events are, you know, you, you pick up some knowledge in, in the talks, but it's mostly about getting to know people. The whole way track is the best track there is, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and for me, especially because I'm very, fairly active in, in the issue queue, I, I tend to meet a lot of people in the issue queue, and I've never met them in real life. And then if you go to these events and suddenly you meet somebody in real life, that, that's amazing. Yeah. That's, and it makes it, more, more, yeah, it makes it more real and easier to connect later on on the message board because you now have some, somebody real connected to it. So I, I love that part about it. 
Cool. Yeah, I said the hallway track is the best track, except this track, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, cool. Um, yeah, anything else we can discuss about Core? Uh, yeah, because um, you are now a uh, developer at I.O. Uh, many employers in, well, almost the complete IT industry, but also, of course, in open source and in the Drupal industry, have got challenges in finding new talent, in finding uh, young uh, people to join their company, uh, also to make sure that it's uh, inclusive and a diverse uh, environment. Do you have a recommendation for uh, companies uh, watching this? How can they be appealing to uh, a wide variety of uh, people? Not sure about a wide variety of people. I'm not sure how to handle that because yeah, there's not. We don't have a lot of. Influx, you know, mm -hmm. we're, we're, it's basically about everybody you can get, you, you can want to try and bring in. It's just there's such a shortage. Yeah. But keeping people, I think, is now key. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I, I know what we're doing at IO, we have this, this, this whole academy track set up where we, where we try to guide you, and especially for the, for the Drupal people uh, coming in. Um, what kind of track is that? It's, yeah, we, we call it the, the, the I.O. Academy. I.O. Academy, okay. Yeah, so we yeah. have this, this whole line of courses you, you can do. It, it's basically like two months where, where you're working on this project. You get your own Jira board with issues on it and just make people comfortable with that and get them in, 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 in like a real-life workflow, uh, especially for Drupal. It's still, the, 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 you know, the learning cliff is still there. Yeah. It, it, it hasn't gone away. Uh, you're a microbiologist, biologist, <laughs> went into uh, IT industry. Uh, where should companies that are looking for future uh, developers uh, go? Go to universities or to complete other studies and, and, and advertise there? Well, they, they shouldn't limit themselves to IT studies, you know. No. Uh, the people that want to learn, people are, 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 are into it, then, you know, they'll learn on the job. Uh, you, you know, you find yourself... Some, some smart people that are interested in what they're doing, and the rest will come. Drupal isn't sexy, is it right? I mean, it's hard to, to get new people in by saying, hey, we do Drupal. Drupal yeah. is not sexy. D Dr Drupal is not sexy. It's no, not in. no it's, it's 20 years old. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a legacy it's, in itself. Yeah. yeah. No, and that, 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 yeah, I, I understand that makes it hard. I'm, I'm happy that's not part of my job. Yeah. You know, as a developer, I, I get to stay away from <laughs> that because that is, you know, I think harder than my job. So, yeah. um, and, you know, I, I know what we're trying to do, and to you know, educate people, just just make them learn and 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 get some on hands experience. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it's hard to get people. Wow. Okay. Um, thank you very much uh, for your time, uh, Len. Um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Len Swanefeld, and. Um, <laughs> For me, it was very interesting uh, to hear the road from uh, being a young Len growing up and now uh, being a uh, senior developer at uh, IO. Um, thank you all. Um, we will uh, immediately continue with uh, the next, next speaker here on stage, uh, in the main stage. And uh, we also have uh, breakout sessions. So um, uh, thank you all for your time and your attention. And um, yeah, we'll move on with the program. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm. Mm. Cool.